What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna be going through the differences between what a data analyst does versus what a data scientist does versus what a data engineer does. I will also be providing some practical examples as we go along to help you gain a better understanding of the differences. Right, jumping straight into it, I'm gonna start with the job descriptions. So the job description of a data analyst, a data analyst collects, analyzes, and reports data so the business can gain a better understanding of their performance. The data scientist now, a data scientist analyzes data sets using a variety of tools and sophisticated techniques in order to solve business problems and generate actionable insights that will add value to the business and make an impact. So the main differences between the data analyst and the data scientist is the variety of tools and the sophisticated techniques, which is basically the machine learning section down here, the critical thinking and the creativity. So they basically do the same thing. They both analyze data, data analysts and data scientists. However, the data scientists are using more advanced techniques and more tools. Now, moving to the data engineer, a data engineer is responsible for creating and managing systems, databases and pipelines in order to provide an automated and secure data environment for the business. So the idea here is that, let's say this is the infrastructure of the whole business. By the way, I took this picture from Google. It's not my work. The data engineer is responsible for maintaining all of this infrastructure. So the number of servers, number of databases, the pipelines that pulling data into the databases, the distribution of data into data lakes or data warehouses, and their security. Now, the data analyst and the data scientist, which is these two, most of the time start their work from here and after. So depending how mature the infrastructure of the business is, so if there is enough data engineers that they maintain these databases, then the data analyst can connect to those databases and start generating their analytics and reports. And the data scientists can also connect into those databases and start running their machine learning models. Right, that's a summary. So if we go back now and we look at the specific tasks, by the way, if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and enabling notifications for my future videos. Right, starting from the first thing, which is reporting, both data analysts and data scientists are doing reporting. However, I would say it's more of a data analyst thing, but the skills of reporting also exist within the data scientist. So as a data analyst, you will be spending a lot of your time either creating reports or running, refreshing those reports. You will need skills like data gathering skills, cleaning, transforming, storing, and also technical skills like SQL, Excel, database knowledge, Power BI, or any other visualization tool. By the way, the technical skill set, which is over here too, it really depends from the tech stack of the company you're working for. They might have a different tech stack, but 99% of the time, there is an SQL database. And now if we look at the first thing of the data engineer is database and systems creation and management. So as a data engineer, you will be spending time creating new databases and new systems based on the project requirements. And the skills you need here is database and server creation skills, management skills, data gathering and data cleaning, data investigation and analytic skills, data transformation and storing skills, automation skills, and again, technical skills. So SQL Server, TSQL, Excel, SSRS, Dimensional Modeling, Data Warehouse, Cloud Tools, and also any other tool that exists in the tech stack of the company you're working for. 
Now let's look at a practical example into SQL that will help us understand the difference of these three. If we go into SQL now, this is one server, this is one database, and this is five tables. Now, the job of the data engineer is to set up this server, set up this database, and also load in all the raw data that the company has. So this is all a data engineer's work. Additionally, this is a very simple one. Usually, the data engineer is going to have to manage multiple servers with multiple databases with multiple tables. So this is just a small example. Now, for the data analyst and the data scientist, there is two scenarios when it comes into reporting. There's probably more, but two major ones. The first one is that when the business requests a report that the data already exists in this database, so basically the data engineers have already put the data there, then the data analyst or the data scientist can come into this SQL, start querying the data in order to answer the questions or create a clean summary and then take that clean summary into Excel or a visualization tool, create their dashboards or their analytics, and then provide it to the business. The second scenario now is that the data for the problem that the business has asked us to solve does not exist in the database. So the data analyst or the data scientist is gonna to have to come into this database and actually input the data in and then start querying the data. This is why we say that the data analyst and the data scientist need to have SQL input skills and also cleaning, transforming, storing, and then analyzing the data in SQL. And just to show one example of a report, actually two reports, we have one here, which is an Excel report. So this one over here, and we also have another report in Power BI, which is this one over here. So data analysts or data scientists need to know how to create them, run them, refresh them, and send them to the business. Right, going back to this document now and looking at the second task, which is analyzing the data for data analysts, analyzing the data for data scientists, but it's different for data engineers, as data engineers don't really need to analyze the data for the business. Now, what a data analyst and a data scientist does is that after they finish with the whole refreshing of the dashboards or creation of the dashboards, they need to spend time analyzing the data. And there is a few ways of analyzing the data. There is lots of ways, actually. So one of them is just by looking at the dashboard and investigating why, for example, we have these reds over here, why are we not meeting our target into public sector, or why online products are not meeting their targets. So make a deep dive into the problems that the business is facing. Another way is actually by querying the data furthermore or joining more data in order to do better analytics. Another way for the data scientist is that they can take the data into Python and start running statistics in order to do further analytics. Right, going back to the document now and looking at the second task of a data engineer. So as we said, they are not concerned with analyzing the data. Their second task is data retrieval from a number of sources. So after the engineers finish with their database and their systems, then they will be spending their time connecting to a number of data sources and pulling in the required data. So the examples we have over here, let's say this is the main database over here and the data engineers need to create connections from all these sources, the data producers. So for example, this is data from another database, or this is user data, or this is SaaS data, or this is cloud data going into the database. And just to show a practical example of what an engineer is going to do in case the business asks for a new API, which is this over here, let's say the business asks for social blade data into the database. So the engineer is going to have to go into Google, type in social blade API, for example. Then they're going to need to start investigating the results to see if there is an API, which there is for social blade, which is actually social data. And then what they need to do is to test this API. 
So first, they're going to read all the documentation and see if the required KPIs requested from the business actually exists in this API. Then they're going to need to take this code and test it for YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, or whatever KPIs the business needs. Adjust it based on the KPIs the business needs and then run it into the database. So if we go back into this picture, these lines are actually the pipelines that are connecting the source, so Social Blade, with the database. Right, moving on, the next task we have is ad hoc analysis for data analyst, ad hoc analysis for data scientist, and no ad hoc analytics for data engineers. And that's because data engineers do not do ad hoc analytics. Now, the difference between the data analyst and the data scientist is that it depends how complex the ad hoc request is. If it requires statistics and machine learning, then the data scientist is going to pick up the ad hoc. And if it's not requiring anything advanced, then the analyst is going to pick up the ad hoc. And just to show you an example, if I go into SQL, if the question from the business is which account is performing the best in terms of revenue, then the analyst can come into SQL they can write their query, they can take their results into Excel or visualization tool, create their visuals and then push it to the business. However, if the question is something like which variables affect revenue the most, then the data scientist is going to have to pick up this ad hoc, take the data into Python and run feature importance, for example, or correlations in order to identify which variables affect revenue the most. Now, looking at the third task of the data engineer is dimensional modeling. So after the data engineer finishes with storing all their data from the API, for example, then they will need to spend time to build dimensional models on top of that data. So separate the data into facts and dimensions. And just to show you an example, if we go into this Power BI, by the way, this is Power BI and it allows us to see the model, which is over here. And this is a dimensional model. So we have our fact, which is this one over here. And we have our dimensions, which is this account lookup, this target, the calendar and the opportunities over here. Right. Moving on. The next task we have for data analyst is the automation of all processes. Same with the data scientists. And actually data engineers are also doing a lot of this automation. I think I added it over here because anything the data engineers are doing are actually automating it. They work with prod and dev environments and they have these processes where they push data into production and it's actually very automated. Moving on, the next thing we have for data analysts is the communication skills, which they actually exist also on data scientists, but not on data engineers. The reason is because data analysts and data scientists have a lot of interaction with the business. However, the data engineers do not have that much interaction with the business. They mostly have interactions with product owners, product managers, data managers, or data scientists and data analysts. Right, no more tasks for the data analysts now. The next thing we have is what separates the data analysts from the data scientists. The main thing which is the machine learning models. So data scientists need to have knowledge of how to run machine learning models. Data analysts are not really required to know machine learning, same with data engineers. However, I have collaborated with data engineers mostly when deploying machine learning models because they can assist data scientists in terms of storing or pushing the data around or deploying the machine learning models. And just to show you an example of a machine learning model, if we go over here into Python, here I have three examples. So a decision tree, random forest and XGBoost. So I start by loading the data from SQL into Python so I can automate it later. Then I start by cleaning the data. So the data pre-processing phase, splitting the raw data, First, I run decision tree, I evaluate my model, I run feature importances, then I go down here, I run correlation coefficients, 
then I calculate a lot of evaluation metrics, I analyze them, then I run a random forest, then I optimize my random forest, then I run XGBoost, and at the end, I think when I'm happy with my model, I am deploying my model using new unseen data coming from SQL. So I fit this model with unseen data that is coming straight away from SQL. And then I'm making my predictions and I'm outputting my data into SQL again. Then from SQL, I connect this new SQL table with Power BI where I build my dashboards, my visuals, so I can analyze my predictions and I can go back to the business with recommendations on our potential trends in this example. So I can actually help the business to maintain these customers and make more money. Next, we also have critical thinking and creativity for data scientists as they need to be very critical with their solutions because chances are they're going to have more experience than the data analyst and they're going to know better how to do things and also creativity because they're going to have more experience in terms of models and softwares versus the data analyst. Next, looking at what's left for the data engineer is data security, which doesn't really exist in the data analyst or the data scientist, although they need to be very careful when it comes to PI data. However, the data engineer is going to be responsible on who gets to see what in the servers, in the databases or in the tables, and also who gets to see what in these dimensional models. Moving on, the next thing we have is data migration. Again, it only exists under data engineers because chances are the company you're in right now is migrating that data into the cloud. So just to give you an example, this is a local database, let's say the YouTube channel. The data engineer is gonna to have to take all this data and replicate all the tables, the views, the stored procedures into the new cloud solution which it doesn't necessarily have to be SQL. It might be on Python or on a different language. So the data engineer is going to have to know how to translate and move this code from the on-prem solutions into the cloud solutions. The last thing we have now is cloud solutions and they only exist under data engineers for the moment because in the future, all this reporting is actually going to be done on these cloud solutions so data analysts and data scientists should also learn how to use these cloud solutions. So the idea is that any new data infrastructures are built on cloud solutions such as Azure, AWS, or GCP. The reason why these cloud technologies are very helpful is because these are distributed technologies, so they can actually run our code on multiple machines at the same time, which is going to reduce the time it takes to process data. And we can also optimize very easy our clusters. So if we want to increase the CPU power, we can do it very fast. If we want to add more memory or if we want to add a GPU. And this GPU is actually very important for the machine learning models over here. So as a data engineer, it's very important to know how to do these things. Right, the last thing I've done is that I have taken all these tasks by all three roles and I have plotted them into Power BI in terms of time spent doing each task by role. So now we can see all three roles, data analysts, data scientists, and data engineers, all their tasks and how much time they spend doing it. So as you can see, the data analyst is mostly focused on reporting, ad hoc and analyzing data. They also do a bit of automation and communication and data security. Then the data scientist is mostly doing machine learning models, presentation of results, communication, creativity and critical thinking. However, they also do ad hoc and analyzing the data, but mostly it's done by data analysts. And then the data engineers are mostly concerned with database management, dimensional modeling, security, pipelines, cloud solutions, and automating the results. I have done the same thing in terms of technologies. However, please bear in mind that technologies depend from the tech stack of the company. So this might be different depending on the company. 
So as you can see, data engineers are mostly using Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift, SQL, C, Java, Scala, and other for API calls, cloud technologies, and clusters. Then we have the data scientists mostly using SQL, which is quite high. These tools are also quite high, a lot of Python and R, some PowerPoint, a lot of Power BI or Tableau, some Excel, and also some clusters and some cloud technologies. And at the end, the data analyst is touching SQL, Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift is also touching some Python or R, is touching some PowerPoint, is touching some Power BI and Tableau, and a lot of Excel. Right, this is it for this video. I hope you've gained a very good understanding of these three roles and what they do differently and also how these roles are related to each other. If you feel that you've gained enough value out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Thank you very much for watching this video.